31, welcome to our last example. I just wanted to change things up a little bit in an example six, where instead of me giving you an equation for a function, what if I gave you the graph of the function? Could we get all of that same information? So let's try it. What can we conclude about the polynomial represented by the graph shown in the figure below based on its intercepts and turning points? All right, so I could ask you for the end behavior, and graphically, you can see the end behavior, right? We would have said this was left forever and up forever. And this would have been right forever and down forever. Meaning I can see that my domain and range are both negative infinity to infinity. But when we talk about end behavior, we always start, start with as x goes left and as x goes right. So let's see what's happening. As I head left, I can see that I'm heading up, so I know f of x is going to positive infinity. And as I head right, I can see I'm heading down, so f of x is heading to negative infinity. If I wanted to write this up as arrows, right, I, I would just write this, or I could say left end up, right end down. All right, so if I was going to find the equation of this polynomial? Do we ultimately believe that it would be an odd degreed polynomial or an even degreed polynomial? Well, if I take a look at it, I want you to see that the ends are in opposite directions. And whenever your ends are in opposite directions, you know you're dealing with an odd polynomial, or at least an odd degreed polynomial. All right. Now, if I was, again, going to try and get that function's equation, would that lead coefficient be positive or negative? Well, if I'm taking a look at this, right, I see that the left end is up and the right end is down. And specifically, when your right end is down, if your right end is ever down, and this is true for odd or even, but if your right end is down, then you have a negative lead coefficient. All right. And then taking a look, x-intercepts, well, how many do I have? I see one of them here one of them here, one of them here. Now, x-intercepts are ordered pairs, so you owe me an x and a y coordinate, but I have three. I have one at negative three, zero, negative one, zero, and it looks like two, zero. Right, I'm gonna scooch this up just a little bit so we can start to see the rest of our traits. So give me a moment. I think we're getting a few of these in view. We might scooch up a little bit more later. All right, the y-intercepts, well, here it is. And even though this is plural, it technically shouldn't be, right? You're only ever going to have one y-intercept. Or I should say, if, if you did have more than one y-intercept, then, then you wouldn't have a function. And this is definitely a function. It passes the vertical line test. So this is 0, 6. All right, how many turning points do I have? Now, when you hear turning points, that's the collective term for maxes and mins. All right, so all of them combined. I don't want to distinguish max versus min. They're all just in one bucket. So I see a minimum here and a maximum here. And these are turning points because you can see my function changes from decreasing to increasing, right? Turning point, it turns. Here, my function changes from increasing to decreasing. The function turns at this max. So I have two turning points, All right? And actually, I'm gonna write it out in words just so we're clearer on that. Two turning points. All right, now when you have two turning points, let me scooch this up just a little bit more. All right, when you have two turning points, what degree polynomial do you have? At least what degree? Well, if we go back to that box that was a couple pages ago, let me go grab it. All right, if we go back, actually it wasn't a couple of pages ago, it was one page ago, right? So if you have two turning points, if n minus one is equal to two, then n must have been three. All right, so you have a polynomial of degree at least three. It could be more than that, but it's at least three as we're moving through this. So I know I'm dealing with at least x cubed. All right, it could be x to the fifth, x to the seventh, but it's at least three. So that's what we're working with here. All right, so now that we're at the end of this, I wanna show you what, what we should have under our belts. So sh we should be able to identify power functions. 
and I know it's been a little while, but a power function is just one term. It's a monomial. It's got a coefficient k and a power on x of n, right? And we should know the end behavior of the power functions. Again, both ends up, both ends down. Maybe it's left end up, right end down. Maybe it's right end up, left end down. But based on those power functions and their end behaviors, that will regulate the end behavior of polynomial functions. All right, and polynomial functions, they're when we're adding or subtracting multiple power functions. And that lead term always determines the end behavior of, of, your, of your polynomial function. So we wanna be able to identify the degree and the leading coefficient of polynomial functions because whatever that term is, whatever that power function that is the lead term, whatever that lead term is, that's gonna regulate a whole bunch of traits for us. All right, so with that, we're finished with section 5.2. We're actually gonna head into 5.3 and we're gonna to start to look at graphs of these polynomial functions because that is one of the, the biggest end games for Math 31. If I give you an equation, can you make me a graph and can you tell me a whole bunch of traits? All right, so thanks so much, gang, and I will see you in the next section. Bye.